This is a Latino. Now, why does he look so white? Latin Americans form a very broad cultural category, made up of more than 600 million people coming from many different countries. But what is their DNA actually made of? Or in other words, what race are they? The topic of population genetics in Latin America has always been very complex. But after spending several weeks analyzing dozens of scientific studies, we are finally able to give you an accurate report of Latino ancestry. We found out that Latin American heritage can be tied to three main ancestral populations, with the first one being the most overlooked. From the 16th to the 19th century, more than 10 million African slaves were forcibly transported to the Americas, with approximately half of them destined for Iberian colonies. This massive influx of people transformed the genetic landscape of the region, yet their contribution is often neglected in discussions of Latin American identity. So which countries did this continental group impact the most? The origins of these enslaved Africans were diverse, primarily from West Africa, but also including significant numbers from other regions of the continent. As African ancestry became an integral part of the region's genome, complex racial dynamics started to evolve in Latin America. It's important to note that despite the substantial African genetic presence, only a small minority of Latinos identify as black in censuses. Instead, centuries of intermixing led to the development of various mixed-race categories, such as mulattoes, zambos, and pardos. African admixture is particularly prominent along the Atlantic coast and in the Caribbean, as these areas were closest to the main slave ship routes. The impact varies significantly across countries and even within them. And in some regions, African genetic contribution reaches half of the total ancestry. But there is one Latin American nation that received more slaves than all the others combined. Brazil, the largest country in South America, was profoundly shaped by African influence, receiving by far the largest number of slaves in the Americas. However, the distribution of African ancestry across the nation is highly heterogeneous, and black Brazilians may not be as black as you think. Brazil's African heritage also has a unique characteristic compared to Spanish America, a higher proportion of East and Southern African ancestry. While West African origins predominate, as in other parts of Latin America, the Portuguese colonies in present-day Angola and Mozambique contributed to a more diverse African gene pool in Brazil. Interestingly, while Brazil was greatly influenced by Sub-Saharan Africans, their nationwide input is not as high as often assumed. On average, the national African genetic contribution is around 20%, but this figure masks significant regional variations. The state of Bahia, located in the Northeast, region stands out with over 40% African admixture. The complexity of Brazil's racial landscape is further illustrated by genetic studies of self-identified black Brazilians who represent just over 10% of the population. On average, those individuals are genetically 7% indigenous American, 43% European, and only 50% African, significantly lower than in African Americans or black Caribbeans. Now there is a neighboring country where being black has a very different meaning. Colombia presents a fascinating case study in the distribution of African ancestry in Latin America. The average African genetic contribution and the percentage of Afro-Colombians are both relatively low, but these national figures mask extreme regional variations that make Colombia unique in the Hispanic world. The Pacific region of Colombia has the highest concentration of African ancestry, with this genetic contribution reaching over 60%, the highest in South America. This is particularly evident in the Choco department, where the majority of the population is of African descent. In stark in contrast, African admixture is just over 10% at the national level. This input is especially modest in the densely populated Andean region, while it is found at over 20% in the Caribbean region, highlighting the historical patterns of slave importation and subsequent population movements. Surprisingly, while the national average of African ancestry is low, those Colombians who do have African heritage tend to have it in high proportions, as the average Afro-Colombian is about 69% African, significantly higher than it is for self-identified black individuals in many other Latin American countries. So what's the country with the most African ancestry in Hispanic America? The Dominican Republic stands out as the Spanish-speaking country with the highest level of African admixture. Now this genetic contribution follows a vastly different pattern compared to the previous country, as its distribution is much more homogenous among the population. But do Dominicans see themselves as black? It should be noted that the island of Hispaniola, shared between the Dominican Republic and Haiti, was home to the earliest European contact in the Americas in 1492. In fact, the founder Dominican population was mostly European in origin with some native Taino element, but was 
modified by subsequent African inflows over the centuries. The majority of modern Dominicans can be classified as mulatto, reflecting a mix of European and African ancestry. This is in stark contrast to neighboring Haiti, where African admixture forms a strong majority of the total ancestry, and where most of the population can be considered black. Genetic studies indicate that the average Dominican is around 40% African, significantly higher than most people in other Latin American countries. These figures are reflected in census data, as about 74% of Dominicans identify as mixed race, while only 8% identify as black. But there is a population who has had a far greater impact than Africans among modern Latinos, and they have been living in the Americas for much longer. The indigenous peoples of the Americas, often referred to as Amerindians, have inhabited both the northern and southern parts of the New World for more than 10,000 years. Millions of natives are still scattered across American countries, and their genetic input might be more important than you think in some regions. Amerindians are believed to have arrived in several waves of migration from Asia, primarily crossing the Bering Strait land bridge during the last ice age. The initial settlement of the Americas occurred approximately 20,000 to 14,000 years ago, and was followed by a rapid expansion southwards along the western coast of the continents. Native Americans emerged from an admixture of two distinct ancient populations. The main one diverged from East Asian peoples before the last glacial maximum, while the other is a Paleolithic Siberian population known as ancient North Eurasians. Interestingly, this latter group shared deep genetic affinities with Eastern European hunter-gatherers, and therefore to a lesser extent with modern Europeans. The arrival of Iberian settlers profoundly modified the Western Hemisphere, yet several countries have a majority of Amerindian ancestry. While tens of millions of people still identify as indigenous Americans, now natives had the most impact in very specific parts of the Americas, and it might be linked to sophisticated pre-Columbian civilizations. Mexico is known for its profound indigenous legacy, both culturally and genetically. The vast majority of Mexicans are usually classified as mestizos, as they are mostly the result of admixture between Europeans and Amerindians. But native ancestry is noticeably high in some regions, and there is a good reason for that. Mexico boasts the largest indigenous population in the Americas in absolute numbers, with close to 12 million people identifying as Nahua, Maya, or with other native ethnicities. This high concentration of indigenous people is also observed in a neighboring country, as they make up over 40% of the population in Guatemala. On average, about 50% of the genetic ancestry of Mexicans is of Amerindian origin, making it one of the most indigenous countries in Latin America. This genetic heritage is particularly pronounced in central Mexico, where Amerindian ancestry reaches around 60%, and even higher in Mexico City, where it approaches 70%. The high concentration of indigenous ancestry in central Mexico is closely tied to the historical presence of the Aztec Empire. This region, known as Mesoamerica, was one of the cradles of Native American civilization and home to a dense pre-Columbian population. But another indigenous empire left a serious mark in South America, leading to a strong Amerindian input in an unexpected country. Ecuador's rich history and diverse population gave birth to a complex genetic makeup. The country's mainland, once incorporated into the Inca Empire, can be split into three very distinct natural regions, with each area's unique climate and terrain having influenced its genetic profile, and you will be surprised by the impact of Amerindians in two of them. The latest census reveals that over 85% of Ecuadorians identify as mixed, with most considering themselves mestizo, and some of them montubio, a term used to describe mestizos from the countryside of coastal Ecuador. And there's a reason why people from this region see themselves as different. The coastal part of the country stands out from the other regions, as it shows more important European and African influences. Both of these ancestral groups combined make up 48% of the total ancestry, with the remaining 52% being of indigenous origin. But how high does native ancestry really get in Ecuador? The average Ecuadorian is close to 60% Amerindian, a figure that gets to over 65% in two distinct regions, the first one being the highlands, where the capital city Quito is located, while the other is the Amazon, a region with a low population density. Now we need to head southwards to find the heart of the former Inca Empire. Peru is the most Amerindian nation in the Americas. This country is not only home to a significant indigenous population, but its people also have the highest proportion of native ancestry. Now there is a little known South American nation that is very much alike. In the 15th century, the Incas emerged as a powerful state. In the span of a century, they managed to form the largest empire in the pre-Columbian Americas. Their capital, Cusco, is one of the major cities in modern Peru. And Quechua, the official language of the empire, is still spoken to this day. About 25% of Peru 
Peruvians identify as native, with Quechua people forming the country's major indigenous group. The Quechua are genetically close to other Andean people, such as the Aymara. They are also the biggest native ethnicity in neighboring Bolivia. And this is not the only thing making the two countries very similar. Bolivians and Peruvians both have a strong Amerindian input, forming around three quarters of their genetic makeup. And they also have little to no sub-Saharan African admixture. The remaining ancestry is linked to the fall of their once great empire, when men from the other side of the world reached the Americas 500 years ago. European colonization completely changed the landscape of Latin America. Not only did it shape the linguistic and cultural background of the region, but it also had the strongest impact on the genetic makeup of Latinos. This heritage may be widespread across Latin America, yet a specific region was especially attractive to European migrants. European influence began in the late 15th century, as Iberian settlers established colonies across the Americas. Over time, the colonial populations grew through both natural increase and continued arrivals. It was the creation of independent countries in the 19th century that marked a new phase in European immigration to Latin America. The most massive waves came from Italy, Spain, and Portugal, with also large numbers from France, Germany, and various Eastern European countries. Some Sephardic Jewish ancestry can also be found in modern Latinos, especially in Spanish America where conversos were the most numerous. A significant amount of Jews and Levantine people arrived later on, but some more exotic populations also left for Latin America, such as Japanese people going to Brazil in the 20th century century, or the earlier and lesser known Chinese immigration to Peru. Many parts of South America were unsuitable for long-term settlement, but a particular area was favored by European immigration, as this region stood out with its milder climate and vast agricultural potential. And there's a country that truly benefited from its geographical situation. Argentina stands out as one of the most European nations in Latin America. This high European component is the result of massive waves of immigration from the old continent. However, this genetic input varies a lot depending on the region. So is the average Argentinian really that close to Europeans? Argentina is located in the Southern Cone, a very distinct part of South America. This subregion is characterized by its mostly temperate climate, which facilitated the arrival of European immigrants. Millions of Spaniards settled in Argentina over the centuries, but Italians were the number one newcomers during the Great Immigration Wave. Around 70% of Argentine ancestry is of European origin. The majority of the remaining admixture is indigenous, while the genetic input of sub-Saharan Africans is only minimal. Despite the predominance of European ancestry, Argentina is not homogeneous. In fact, the Amerindian component can even be dominant in some parts of the country. The concentration of European ancestry is particularly high in Buenos Aires, as well as in some other provinces of the Pampas region. In these areas, which are also the most densely populated, the average European input is over 80%. Now what if a Caribbean country was as European as Argentina? Cuba presents a surprising genetic makeup for the Caribbean region. European contribution in this nation is often underestimated, partly due to its significant Afro-Cuban population and culture. Yet millions of people crossed the Atlantic Ocean to reach this island. But what's the proportion of white Cubans currently living there? Cuba experienced substantial immigration, primarily from Spain, including a significant amount of Canarians and Western Spaniards. This resulted in a level of European admixture similar to Argentina, with scientific literature putting it slightly higher than 70% but the balance of other ancestries is very different in this country. While Argentina is more indigenous, Cuba has a higher African input, reflecting its history as a major destination for enslaved Africans. The distribution of European ancestry in Cuba is not uniform, and this admixture is at its highest in the western part of the island. Now what's the genetic makeup of the 64% of Cubans who identify as white? A genetic study found their average ancestry to be 86% European, while the remaining admixture is nearly evenly split between native and African. Interestingly, these proportions are similar to those found in self-identified white Brazilians, as the conception of white in Latin America differs from the one in Europe or the United States. Now a tiny South American nation is even whiter than the ones we mentioned. Uruguay is one of the smallest countries in Latin America, and it also happens to be the one with the highest proportion of European ancestry. The country was home to the indigenous Charrua people in the pre-Columbian period, and was eventually colonized by both Portugal and Spain in the 17th century. So who are the Latinos who look the most like Uruguayan people? Uruguay is situated in the River Plate Basin, also known as the Platine region. Its location and climate made it an ideal place for Europeans to emigrate to. Most of these 19th and 20th century migrants were 
were Spaniards or Italians, but there was also significant French immigration, a lot of them being of Basque origin. Close to 90% of Uruguayans identify as white as of the latest census, which is very similar to regions from the two neighboring countries, as people from northeast Argentina and southern Brazil have a comparable European input. The average Uruguayan is close to 80% European, with most of the remaining admixture being Amerindian. Yet Uruguayans do have a higher African input than Argentines, making them closest to Brazilians from Rio Grande do Sul. Now what if we could visualize the mix of those three main populations for all of Latin America? Sure, we could create separate maps, highlighting the input of each of these ancestries, but scientists use a way more effective method, known as a ternary plot. All Latin American countries fit inside of this triangle, with each side measuring more or less of the three main admixtures, and each corner meaning 100% of one of these ancestral groups. Quite a few countries have a large majority of European ancestry, even the small island of Puerto Rico, as it is very similar to Brazil. Nations such as Venezuela, Costa Rica, or Paraguay are also mostly European, but show elevated levels of Amerindian or African ancestry. Only Peru and Bolivia are over two-thirds Amerindian, owing to their location in the center of the former Inca Empire. Central America American countries usually have quite a lot of indigenous DNA, with varying degrees of African and European admixture. Although some areas of Latin America have a strong African input, such as the Choco Department in Colombia or the state of Bahia in Brazil, no country has a majority of African ancestry on average. The Dominican Republic remains the most African nation at 40%. On the opposite side of the spectrum, some countries have little to none of this admixture. This includes Mexico, but also a nation like Chile, whose people are very close to a 50-50 mix between natives and Europeans.